Hello there and welcome back to the Music Career Show. Today's guest is a bass player, an author and an educator. He runs a very popular bass education website as well as a YouTube channel where he releases bass tuition videos every single day. And to top it all off, he has also written five bass books from Fundamental Changes. Over the past 10 years, he's been involved with remote recording projects with credits on the BBC series The Serpent, Lonely the Brave and the Adam Buxton podcast. And if that wasn't enough, he also has played with some huge names, including Katie Malua and Marta Reeves. Please welcome Dan Hawkins. Good man to Dan. Hello there. Hey, thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. It's, it's a pleasure. Yeah, it's an absolute pleasure to have you on. So if that kind of uh, CV wasn't enough to go by and people are still not 100%, 100% sure on, on who you are, if they've not heard, heard of you just yet, why don't you introduce yourself and tell us what it is that you do in your own words? Well, I mean, I'm... I'm old now. This is, what is it? I think I've been playing bass for 31 years now. And this year is my 20th as a, as a professional in the industry. So, oh, wow. you know, I mean, yeah, we'd probably get onto this, but 20 years ago to now, uh, everything's changed. It really has, including we wouldn't have been, we wouldn't have had this oh. conversation 20 years ago, but you probably wouldn't have been born. But I mean, <laughs> you know, I started off, um, in the industry as a session player, that's kind of what I wanted to be from a very young age. I was very lucky to have music lessons, you know, piano from six and then trumpet. Nothing really, you know, grabbed me until bass happened right. as a massive accident, really, the, the bass, but it was a it was a kind of happy accident. And yeah, I've just been doing it ever since and, and went in playing and just doing all kinds of different gigs in the industry, which we can, we can get onto. And then teaching and function bands and artists and all kinds of things and then gradually started morphing a bit into the remote session thing that's about i don't know 2010 around that time and yeah. that to me i mean it's still a little bit witchcraft you, you you know in this very studio i'll play some bass i'll email it to someone and they'll pay me it's just like when it first happened i just couldn't believe that that was a thing that you can do and now yeah. i mean yeah my career's gone a bit weird actually because <laughs> as any musician will tell you any sort of playing musician as i was doing um the pandemic just cut everything overnight just and and mm -hmm. i was no different that was the same thing but then on top of that i mean i talked to you now from singapore i'm in singapore mm -hmm. now yeah. and that's um because my wife got a teaching job here and oh. i followed we've got a daughter so uh, as you know i think you've got a new you I do. I've got an you? eight and a half month old daughter myself. Yeah. 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 Life. I'm not going to say life is over, but life is different when you have a kid. Completely and, different. Um, you know, we're here because of my wife, not because of me. And it's, you know, it's great. So now I, I haven't gigged since 2020. I haven't had a single gig since then. And I'm, I'm fully online now, if you like. So I, I still do quite a lot of remote sessions. Yeah. I do my YouTube channel. I write books and, that's kind of about it. And I've, I've got my website. My website's kind of the big thing yeah, that yeah. I run and do. And I, I, I sell courses. I'm, I'm very imaginatively titled. I'm called onlinebasecourses.com. <laughs> that's you can't go wrong with that i, I see when yeah. i was sending out the email earlier on for the, the 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 meeting room the recording room that we're recording in just now uh for anyone just listening and thinks that we're actually in the room together we're not this is a, a an online thing I, I mean like the meeting link and um, when i was sent that when i sent that out and i was like that is the best domain name ever it's like well, the most seo friendly thing well, i've ever that's, come across that's the thing well uh, the thing is I, I sort of don't really like it anymore because so what, what i did was over 10 years ago, I got onlinebassplayer.com. Mm. All the other ones that I might have wanted, like, are just a bit snappier. They weren't available. So I just thought, you know, SEO, search engine optimization, that was not a phrase I had a single clue about. But I thought, yeah. okay, well, that is exactly what it is. Exactly so, what it says in the tin. Yeah, so I, that's what I, that's the website I got ages ago. And I actually was top of Google for, you know, if you typed in online bass player or, or whatever. And I think one of the base magazines was had those exact terms. So I probably got a few bit of traffic oh, cool. from that. So that was a kind of plan. And then I don't really love online base courses.com. I think it's a bit boring to me, but on the other hand, it is ex exactly what it is. You know, exactly. Now, I do you have you courses online and that's what it is. So yeah. People, people in that, that I've never heard of Dan Hawkins doesn't know that Dan Hawkins is well, as good I, as he is, but people I, are looking for how to play bass I, online. I, I, I think that's kind of the, the reason I did it. But also, I've got the same name as the 
a guitarist from the darkness exactly the same name dan hawkins so so i've actually oh, is he i knew I, I was wondering yeah i was wondering I, I, I like obviously i knew you as dan hawkins but i was like when i saw that i was like yeah and then I wondered, oh, was it just from uh, Stranger Things that I, I read? Like, as yeah, in, like, if this, that Hawkins, as well, yeah. I wondered if, if that was where, yeah, yeah I didn't so even I, think of that. I've had his royalties a few times before. Have uh, you? Yeah, I have, yeah, and I've given them back. I'd like to put that on record. But <laughs> I think if you have the same name as someone else in the music industry, it's like, it's probably not the most helpful. I mean, you know, I could say Daniel Hawkins, but I've always used Dan and... Yeah, I mean, you know, no, no one really knows who I am. So if you were to search Dan Hawkins' music, he'd come up and I'd maybe come up like page two or three or something. But, but yeah, so I didn't want to get my name involved early doors. But yeah, well, for why it's worth, Dan, I know who you are. And well, that, I that's all that counts. Over, I, I went for you over the fake Dan Hawkins. So <laughs> if Dan Hawkins is listening and wants to come on the podcast, by all means, I'm sorry, Dan, for calling you fake, but. No, no. And if if you want to keep giving me your royalties as well, I'll, I'll I exactly yeah, <laughs> that that'd be sound. Um, you said you've not had a gig since uh twenty twenty. Mm. Now we will yeah. get into the gig and scene in Singapore because I was in Singapore in two thousand and nineteen, um, on my honeymoon and Fantastic. Clark Clark Key is uh-huh. my absolute favorite place in the entire world. Singapore well, is my favorite place in the well. world, but Clark Key, for yeah. anyone that's never been to Clark Key, it's like it's it's um, it's I, I don't know a hundred hundred two hundred different venues, all with like a five six seven piece band of the best musicians you've ever come across every single oh, night. I mean, it's news to me because I I I arrived here in twenty twenty, so that was I think Singapore was doing quite well with the pandemic there in terms yeah. of it was quite free here, but there was certainly no live music until. I don't know, like maybe, you know, obviously the last year, I think yeah. things then moved slower here than, than everywhere else. So, you know, at okay. this point, um, I mean, I, I don't get out that much anyway, oh. but, um, you know, I went out the other day to watch the football and there was a live band set up. But I didn't get to see them, but it, I, that's the next step for me is to try and get back into that scene and yeah. you know, get, get involved a bit more because, you know, when, when you've played as many years as I have, like, I mean, my first gig, I started playing bass at age 11 and because of the reading music experience and piano and and trumpet, I hit the ground and classical guitar, actually very important. It's the same technique. So I sort of hit the first lesson running and it was really kind of easy. (laughs) It it, it kind of was certainly compared to the other instruments. And I, I, you know, the first gig was within a month or so and, and things moved quickly and I, I hadn't stopped gigging at all until that 2020 yeah. so, you know like any musician it was it was odd to to have that thing that you're often defined by you identify you know that part of your life and then yeah. it's gone and for me it's that it's continued to go and I've morphed into this other you know this room here I spend so much time in here yeah you know, filming my youtube videos or or doing the courses or what what have you it's just a different yeah. life now but you know uh, I definitely want to get back into gigging because that's that's sort of why I got into music that's that's the thing I loved about it and now it's sort of not there I think it's important to get that back again I feel absolutely I I, I know exactly what you mean it's it uh, I've never heard it put that way but I think that's probably the best way I've ever heard it put is that it is that one thing that defines you it, yeah. like I, I, I live in Aberdeen I moved here about eight years ago and um I I play in some of the busiest um Irish pubs in Aberdeen. In fact, well, there's only a couple of Irish pubs in Aberdeen and I play in them all. And <laughs> people it, yeah, it's just I'm Irish, you know what I mean? It's it's a bit of a it's a, a bit a bit of a an old brainer, but people would know me from people around town would know me for oh you're you're that guy from Malone's and the same with my bandmate. They just they just know us all as the singer from uh, Malone's. And yeah, when you don't have that it is it is it's so it's so strange, but I've gone the total opposite way in that I had to learn how to do all of this stuff online. I didn't even know that you could get, this is only two years ago. I didn't even know you could get like courses online to yeah. teach you how to do stuff. That didn't even occur to me. See, when I, yeah. when I was first asked about doing online lessons, I was like, what do you mean online lessons? Like on WhatsApp or like text you or something. It did, it, it didn't is that what you do me. then? You, you, you give online lessons and you, you, or do you mean you took an online course to learn about all this stuff? 
no, I found out that these were all things in the world. Yeah, I didn't realize yeah, yeah. that these were things. So I b- yeah, before yeah. the pandemic, I I I was um like I was just gigging at the weekends and I was working in normal jobs. Well, when I say normal jobs, I like work with kids. I done like family support and I was I worked in a nursery for a while. And then like two weeks before lockdown, I quit my job to start teaching music full time, start teaching guitar and all that. And then obviously two weeks later, lockdown. So we had to adapt and I had to, to learn how to teach all these things online. And that was when I came across the whole thing of, oh, you can make a course and sell a course. I was like, wow. Yeah. That's that, amazing. So, yeah. yeah, I think that's quite interesting because not to sound like an old man, but the I think people assume that the younger generation just know everything about technology and what's out there. But in my mm-hmm. experience, it's not actually the case. And, and, you, and you layer musicians on top of that actually... I think sometimes they are a little bit behind the curve with with things like that. I mean, I I would I would sort of tell everyone that just would care to listen about this sort of thing, you know, do courses, do be, get your educational side online, make money that way and I'm sure I've bored a load of people. But yeah, there are a few friends. There's a friend of mine, Mike Barnes drums. You should check him out. He's brilliant and he's got I'm a, very you, much aware of Mike. Yeah, I, I, Mike's one of my best mates. I've played with him for yeah, have it. Yeah, decades, two decades. Yeah, he's a great guy. Right. And um, I'm not. He hasn't got a YouTube channel because of me, but we would certainly talk about that a lot before yeah. any of us had these things going. And he grasped it, and he's just done so brilliantly with it. And it's a different life, really, for 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 all of us doing this. I'm not saying everyone needs to do a YouTube channel or anything. I am saying that there are opportunities. There's technology. There's ways of making money that are completely different, even from 10 years ago certainly from when i started in 2003 20 years ago it was you know these things just didn't exist uh, youtube wasn't <laughs> available yeah. you know people people were sort of obviously having the internet but it was the beginning of people having the internet in their homes <laughs> and you know, yeah, younger people would what be mean. going what's this what yeah. you're talking about but that's what it was like and uh, i know I, I i always 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 say this in that when i was when i was a kid um i always wanted to but what what do you want to be when you grow up barry i want to be a rock star because that was the only way that i could vocalize what i wanted to do because that was the only sort of oh well what do you do as a guitar player when you grow up oh you're yeah. a rock star that's what you do yeah but and that was like i'm 30 so when i was probably say around the same time as when you were starting was when i was learning how to to yeah. play 20 years ago and it was only that 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 was the job path of a guitarist in in my mind not realizing that in the 10 20 years that followed we could be doing this i could be having a conversation with you about all, all, all of this stuff and you're in Singapore and I'm in Aberdeen. I know. It's and I'm crazy. running a podcast and I can do all online courses and I can I can make videos of myself playing guitar, stick yeah. it up on YouTube yeah. and make a living doing that. It's bonkers to think about that. Whereas I know what you're saying. You assume that that the younger generation knows everything. The younger generation has absolutely no idea of life before this. This is normality yeah. for them. I think so, so strange. I think so. I may I think maybe some people, you know, look at people that are online or YouTube and think, well, I, I can't do that. And that's exactly how I thought about it. I mean, I think YouTube started, what was it? 2007 or eight. And Could one of the, f- of, yeah, about that, some, yeah. something like that. I think one of the first guys I was aware of anyway, who, who did the music thing on it anyway, was, um, Justin, you know, Justin Sandico, Justin guitar. Justin guitar. Yes. Yeah. So he's like, he's a phenomenon, that guy. And, and, you know, he was on Radio 4 as like a, some sort of YouTube icon years ago. And there have since been guitarists who've well overtaken his numbers and all that. But he was one of the original guys doing it. And I remember watching him and just not in a million years ever thinking, well, I'm going to do that one day. I want to do I that. Know. It was just partly because I hated cameras and the idea of talking in front of a camera. Even this yeah. sort of thing would have just been, no, that's not for me, you know, being quite a bit introverted. But yeah. then the technology comes and you, you, you sort of think, okay, what do I want from life? And then you, you're led back to the thing of, well, it's probably that YouTube thing. I better learn how to talk in front of a camera. I better yeah. learn how to do lighting and things like that. And, you know, it's there as an opportunity. And how, and how did you learn how to do all that? Well, I mean, the research is, is there online, isn't it? I mean, you, you can use uh, YouTube or Google to find stuff out. I had a mate who, uh, 
works i think it still does for the bbc and lighting so I, I did it not a great way i was kind of like i built up everything too much you know so i got like a bbc lighting specialist to come around and oh, wow. he, he got some gel this is my mate and got some gels and did the lighting and stuff this is my very first um youtube videos i got i can't even remember what it was like a not a very good canon camera um yeah. i think i Bought, I can't remember if I bought one or two to start with, but I eventually got two to do different angles, and yeah. and both of them would would run out of, of memory if you like after ten minutes. So you'd have to just start again. It was terrible, oh. but th- I started just by by doing it and being bad and just iterating it every time. A bit like you learn music, really. You you start off and you're bad, but you yeah. want to do it, so you just carry on through that barrier and you, you get better at it. And it's just. It's really that. I mean, the YouTube thing for me is I, I don't think of myself as a YouTuber because um, it's sort of a means to an end. Like my main thing is my website and to teach, I house my videos on, on YouTube. But I'm mine's is like it's purely based education. Whereas if you look at the really, really good YouTubers these days, there's some kind of storytelling angle. There's entertainment. Their thumbnails are brilliant. Yes. Their titles are good. Maybe controversial. You know, Davey 504, he's got 10 million subscribers. He's like a I know, meme. the French guy. He's the Ita- Italian guy. Italian, apologies. So, so he's, um, he's you know, brilliant. And he's kind of meme guy. And it's just YouTube gold. Whereas someone like me, I'm just a bloke who teaches some hammer-ons and, and slides <laughs> and things. And that's great. People, people seem to like the videos, but it's not yeah. like... I don't do YouTube every day. In fact, I've taken a decision. Well, I do. Actually, you, you said in the intro, I do release a, at least a short, you know, the 30, uh, the yeah, 60 yeah, second yeah. ones. So I do actually, uh, do, I schedule those. And yeah. I've actually taken a bit of a back seat from it because what I was finding by doing what I was doing was two bigger videos a week. And it was just taking up a bit too much time um, yeah. from the other sort of more... Um, you know, potentially financially viable things. And I was just, you know, because YouTube is, you're doing a lot for free, really. You can monetize it in certain ways. Maybe we can talk about that if you like later. Mm. Um, But I just thought I was just doing it a bit too much. But the the top YouTubers, they that's what they do. It is their full-time thing. YouTube isn't full-time for me. No. um, By any stretch. But I am well, trying as, to grow the channel, though. You know, as, ironically. Yeah, as you say, I'm I, I, I means to an end and all that. And apparently, shorts is the way to go. Um, yeah, I think it is uh, now. Yeah. It, it definitely ch- is now. It will, yeah, it will change, though, won't it? You know, it, of course it will. Of course it will. But currently, yeah, shorts is the thing. I yeah. think if I was to look at my, you know, the way you get those like weekly, um, weekly usage pings and what you've been, uh, how 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 much screen time you've had per day? I think if I was to go and see, I'd say TikTok takes up about. I'd say ninety percent of my actual usage nowadays, right. and it's all just filled with people playing guitar or music in general, and food and Pokemon, and that is <laughs> that's yeah. literally it. What so, more do you um, need in life than those three things? Eh? Exactly, that's it. It's the it's, it's all the food groups are represented. You know what I mean? Yeah, everything there. Um, so you said there at the start there that you started off on the likes of piano and trumpet and all that kind of crap, but it never really caught on until bass. Yeah. Were you getting formal lessons in them and doing all the usual grades or what's the yeah. right there? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I was, I'm always say this, uh, the story of my life really, but certainly my music life, it's just real luck um, because my parents were, encouraging us to do music lessons so i think it was it was piano at six then it was trumpet and then it was classical guitar and that was the key really i I didn't realize it till years later but but the the sort of fretting hand and picking hand if you like you pluck with classical guitar use the index middle it's almost exactly the same as the bass and when you're playing piano you're you're reading the left hand and your right hand you've got notes way above the ledger line there way below there and it's just a nightmare yeah but it was great training so first day of and i did have lessons with all these things you know mm-hmm. very lucky but I, I gave up a couple of things obviously bass came into my life but the very first lesson on bass was like okay well you hold this like a classical guitar you read notes but it's only one at a time they're all yeah. within the ledger lines this is i knew all the names of the notes and i could sight read the first lesson so that's that's luck and then yeah, like um, so like in trumpet, I got I got grade eight trumpet, but at age eighteen. Oh, wow. But that's age eighteen after probably eight years of learning it. 
bass guitar yeah. i got grade eight after like a year and a half of of like learning it i got it yeah. like 12 i was 12 when i got grade eight bass so like you know uh, it's clearly something going on there it's like i took to it i loved it it definitely was easier you got all the jokes about bass and all that being easy but gr- the grade eight exam itself was not easy and i was also between teachers so i had to try I had to teach half of it myself as well but all right but but you know i was lucky the music teacher i had uh ian carnegie just uh, just a revolutionary really and he he was a guy on a mission and he wanted to put this little school we were at in on the map and you know my first gig was pretty much like the queen elizabeth hall then the festival hall then the royal albert hall because we we had the school's proms i don't know if you know that but you have the school's proms where you get to play at the royal albert hall and that was you know that was like my first year of playing bass was was that experience and jesus and and like i mean i could name loads of things we were doing that that period of time you know from the age of 11 to certainly 18 i got a music scholarship after that to my next school but the the training within those years was was harder than any professional situation I've been in in terms of like a lot of days there would be a rehearsal for whether it was an orchestra or a big band or what have you and it would literally be like a like a professional situation where the music is put in front of you and it's like okay here we go one two three four and you're in right and so Jesus. I was doing that for years and um, that's luck you know. So I, I was just, I found myself in this musical environment with great musicians. You know, the first band I joined in my next school was a Dream Theatre <laughs> cover band, tribute band. And uh, the drummer, Mike, Mike Crook, who's an amazing guy. Uh, I lived with him for 10 years. We had a great time. But yeah. he was in my older brother's year group. So before I, I met Mike, my brother had said, look, I've, I've got my, you know, this kid brother who's good at bass and, and this guy mike needed a bass player so day one again luck because yeah. the instrument i was playing it's that age-old thing if you can play bass half well no one else wants to play it so it's like the goalkeeper in football you get picked yeah and i, and I did get picked in all these different situations and different bands and um the, especially at that second school i was music scholar good musician but but no way near the best musician in any of the bands i was in that's another thing you yeah be, be around people that are better than you so you know, everything I've just said is just nothing to do with me. It's just luck. And obviously I loved it and I did work hard at it, but yeah. I found myself in this in this environment that it could have been so different in, in so many different ways. No, I could I never have found mean. bass, you know. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's it's it's. You, I I think you're doing yourself a disservice by saying it was all luck. Obviously, I'm I'm only hearing it from you as 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 your story. But um, on a, a very early episode of the podcast, I was saying something similar about playing mandolin. You can probably see behind me. I've got yeah. any amount of yeah. there's thirty odd things in here. Yeah. But uh, I play mandolin, and I would only say that I just I'm a guitar player who knows how to play a mandolin. I wouldn't call myself a mandolin player. And the guy I was saying that to was saying, and I'd say this about you as well, is that um, there's only so far that luck is going to get you. You were lucky to have been presented with the opportunity, but you wouldn't have gotten the opportunity. That that opportunity could have been presented to any Tom, Dick or Harry, and you were the only one worthy or capable of making the most of it. Do you get me? Yeah, I, I do think that's true. But I mean, so we had a guy, th- this music teacher, Ian Carnegie, he brought in, a guy called Steve McManus, who, you know, at the time, sadly passed away now, but he he was, you know, a West End player, you know, doubled on bass guitar and upright bass. And cool. he he came to do a demo in front of the whole school to, to see, like, anyone want to play bass kind of thing. So I was 11 yeah. and my younger brother was nine. So I remember it to this day and he got up and he played and I was not, I was not that impressed at all. It was just like, yeah, whatever. That's quite good, yeah. And so, But my younger brother loved it and he went home and he was like, mum i want to sign up for bass and for some reason she signed me up as well even though so <laughs> that's why i say the luck thing because what if yeah. like she had gone well he's not interested in it. i won't sign him up and I, that, you know it's because i wasn't good enough at any of the other instruments to become a professional there's no there's no way right. i don't think anyway so to have that much of an opinion is like oh that's not that that hard yeah but i mean i was a bit like that as a, as a kid i was a bit like you know it, it the kind of kid that if their mum signed them up for something, I'd just go, yeah, whatever, I'll go along with it. But, you know, I was lucky, but the first lesson, it really was great. I did love it. And, and there's a certain something about picking something up that that just 
you know dovetails with your personality you just love it and for me yeah. I, I i liked it and also people were saying i was good as well that doesn't hurt does it you know even though i no. never never really believed them but that's another story i was just like okay well this is all good and and i just you know it got swept in this wave of of music so yeah, yeah really lucky but yeah like you say yeah that certainly did put in a lot of work in those years of course it did more, yeah. more than no, I, I, I more than i do now on my playing i tell you I, I I say this all the time as well. I'm I, I very, very similar boat and I was very, very lucky that I can't actually remember a time before playing guitar. Get, playing guitar is always something that I've, I, I wanted to do and it was when I picked it up, I picked it up very, very quickly and I, without blowing my own trumpet and being purely factual and not egotistical, I was good. I was a really good guitar player when I was a kid because that was all I did. Yeah. I, uh, I actually got onto a, <laughs> to a competition um, to find the best underage guitar player in Ireland. And I got to the last the final 10 nice. when I was 15 or 16. And there was an, they, they interviewed you and they were like, oh, what does, whatever the question was, something along the, like, like uh, oh, what would mean and what would it mean to you to win this or something? And I was just, I just said something like, oh, guitar is everything I do. I don't really bother doing my homework or I don't bother with <laughs> school or nothing. And then yeah. when I'd been going into school and given all these excuses to me teachers, it's like, oh, Barry, why have you got, not got your homework done? Oh, me goldfish at it or whatever. Do you know what I mean? And then I went into the school the next day after being on telly, telling the whole country that I don't do my homework. There you go. Um, <laughs> yeah, caught rotten. But, um, <laughs> caught rotten. But I, I, know, I know exactly what you mean about that whole, it just dovetails into your personality. It just, it's... Yeah, it's it's I I I can't ever I I specifically remember the very very first time strumming my first guitar. I, speci- I, I remember that, and after that, I can't really ever remember not being able to play it after that. Mm. Yeah, it's so it's so weird. Yeah, um, yeah, no, it's it's been a constant. So that will be thirty, thirty one years I've been playing this year, and it's just it's the one constant in my life, really. Yeah, that's <laughs> been there. Most of uh, the I time. always I'd say, and and again, I agree with you. That's been the one constant in my life as well. Is that going back to I want to be a rock star when I grow up? Man, and dad were like, right, okay, you need to have a backup plan. So I went and done sound engineering as my backup plan. Yeah, never once used it. Never ever once used it because, yeah, uh, I had, like I, I said, I did, yeah, like I said, I never did anything in school. But I wasn't bad in school. I I got bang average results um, from doing absolutely nothing, which I was delighted with. I was delighted to have passed anything at all. Um, but I just played music. I put my effort into bettering myself as a, as a musician because I always knew there was. I always knew that I was going to do something in music, and I always had these jobs to fall back on. But music yeah. was always the constant thing. The, all yeah. the jobs that I've I done up until I I, I went full time in music, I was hopeless at every single last one of them because. I used to just DOS and just like look up like different guitars, different pedals and stuff when I should have been, I don't know, like mixing fiberglass or mixing um, yeah. stuff for fiberglass yeah, yeah. to fix a boat. Do you know what I mean? Or pulling pints. But I was like, no, nah, yeah. can't be arsed. I'll be, I'll be on eBay looking for new guitars and <laughs> all that kind of crack. So sorry to any of my old bosses listening, but like <laughs> as, as if you didn't, as if anyone didn't know that I wasn't interested in what I was doing. Yeah, but I mean, look, um, look at you now. You, you, I think that's an important thing to follow. I mean, it's a bit of a cliche, isn't it? The passion thing, because it's it's also hard work. But I think you you sort of know, don't you, what what it is? I mean, if you if you've got to do something for the rest of your life, you kind of better like it, right? Oh no, hundred percent. I had a guest on um, a couple of weeks ago, and he was saying the exact same thing. I always ask people at at the end. I'll probably ask you the same thing. What would you be doing if you weren't a musician? And his answer was, "I'd still be a person trying to be a musician because the music yeah. is just in me, and I don't. I, yeah. It's not a it's not a choice. It's not that you you woke up one day and he says, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to be a musician. Yeah. It's not a choice. It's uh, it it just is who you are. And and do you know what I mean? Absolutely." Um, yeah, it's a lovely thing. It is a lovely thing. So in terms of, you were saying earlier on about your YouTube being like a means to an end. What was that in? So what kind of things, if anyone's listening now and they're thinking, just online stuff, I'd never really thought about that. I've just been playing in the pub uh, on a Saturday, on a Saturday night and teaching one-to-one or whatever. What kind of different paths can people go down and, and all mm. that? Well, I mean, I, loads. I mean, for me, the story 
kind of started with that guy Mike Crook I was talking to you about. So the drummer, the, the Dream Theater <laughs> tribute band drummer. So I lived with him for ten years, and we would do lo- all kinds of gigs together. He he was a young musician of the year percussion finalist at school, so he was on the BBC and all that for the final, and just yeah. a, kind of a bit of a mentor for me. And we would go to teach in school together. We did a couple of schools that we taught in, you know, two days, three days a week or whatever in and around gigs. And yeah, for a long time, we were trying to work out a way of getting out of that because it was a lot of traveling. It was a lot of, you know, kids mm-hmm. that weren't practicing and it wasn't quite yeah. what we wanted to do. And so, you know, after like a lot of reflection and searching, Mike decided the way I, he, he's getting out of teaching and you know, fast forward now, he's um he's a composer. He lives in um in New York and he does lots of composing for like David Attenborough documentaries and all kinds of and he does and he does courses on library music. Amazing. He's just done so well. And so I was going through the same sort of reflection, you know, how do I get out of this thing? Not that I not that I didn't like it, it's just it the teaching thing just sort of wasn't for me at the time. But yeah, the answer was teaching, but online. Yeah. And, you know, my my younger brother bought me that book four hour work week by tim ferris i don't know if you know him or that i am aware of it yep absolutely But it's just like well i read it and i hated it actually just i didn't understand what it meant but then the second time i read it i was oh that's cool and there's one example in that book of he calls it a muse and it's basically something this was 2008 so i probably reread it in 2009 or 10 and it was um you know just to have this thing that you have on the side preferably something to do with a website preferably digital there was an example in the book where the guy was doing library music. And I met a guy in 2010 who was doing library music and just doing really, really well from it. But still at that time, I was like, well, I, I don't know what that thing would be for me. I just, I couldn't get my head past the fact of me being on YouTube or anything like that. But then uh, just thinking about it, sometimes you do, you have to think about these things for a while. And yeah. then the, it just clicked. It was like, okay, well, look, YouTube is here to stay. Um, you would need to learn xyz skills i had started the online remote bass playing stuff and that was going really really well and absolutely loved that because i wanted to be a session player from from a very young age and the studio started closing down and it started to get harder to get that work you know and so sort of creating that scene in a way um allowed me and still does to record bass for all kinds of people around the world i've done loads and loads of things and i i continue to love that so i think a lot about a lot of it is just deciding what you want to do and making creating the the scene so for me it was like okay um i don't know i would have read loads of those types of tim ferris books i would have i did hundreds of hours of podcasts and all that stuff about online businessy type stuff but initially very boring but i sort of got into it a bit yeah and then it was just yeah well you can do this thing and for me it was like okay well you can what can you what can i do i i'd been teaching for many 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 years and i i love bass i do love teaching like the teaching is an art and it's it's not easy to do but i found that i i I love that i love explaining things to people and getting them to try the thing and it changing their life in a way because music it really matters to a lot of people even if you're like an amateur so i loved all that and and for me it was like getting a website together and um then the youtube channel was sort of the where i do my free lessons so all my lessons yeah. go onto a sort of blog on my online base courses website and then it was like okay well this only happened in singapore actually it's all very very new to me i right. i um <laughs> again a bit of luck i fell in with um fundamental changes they they're one of the biggest or if not the biggest independent music book publisher and they're they're big on amazon if you go onto amazon you'll you'll see fundamental changes books and I did a yeah. gig with a guy that was sort of involved with that and they got me in and, and um, yeah, I've written five books for them. So, you know, all of this stuff feeds into earning a, earning a living, but the website is where I do, you know, I'm, I've got three courses now and that's only really since 20, I think it's 2021 actually. It's only two years since I've had that course right. and that, that's, that's sort of the direction that I'm definitely headed in in the future is just more courses, more offerings, and then keep writing those books, which is extremely different to pre-COVID and pre-coming to Singapore, which was totally just, different. you know, that that was very much, okay, well, how do you earn more money? Because, you know, uh, I, 
my daughter was born in 2018, so you have to start thinking about those things. Yeah. You probably should think about it before that. But, you know, the way to... The way to earn more money as a musician, you know, doing what I was doing was just more teaching and, and more gigs. And it starts to get to a point where, well, that's quite difficult when I got married yeah. in 2018. It's quite difficult with a marriage, with kids to just do more and more and more. But yeah. the, the upside with, with the online thing is just incredible because you can sell courses and books and things like that. And you can still be at home. And actually, my, to cut to the chase, my... My main job is looking after my daughter because my my wife has this full time job. She's assistant principal at a school here. They call it principal, not head teacher, whatever. We call it principal in Ireland as oh, well. I had to get my head around. The head <laughs> right, thing. yeah. There you go. Yeah. So you know, um, I don't know how much you know about Singapore, but like, if you're there's a culture here where you have a helper, and the helper is usually from the Philippines or somewhere like that, and they 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 do the cooking the cleaning everything and they live in with you and that's what everyone here has that everyone around here is from europe and everything but we don't have that for plenty of reasons so that help is basically me you know so i i do a lot of and i've done this since my daughter was born i did a lot of looking after her whilst my wife had the had the main you know full time job and i would be looking after her taking her to childcare whatever in and around gigs which you can do because gigs are in the evening and it's sort of transitioned into me now doing this online thing, but also be able to look after. Because I think a lot of musicians, especially if you're doing gigs and I, I'll call it the traditional route of gigs and teaching and sessions yeah. and all that stuff. Well, you have to do more of those, don't you, to, to earn more yeah. money. And then you're away. So it's like this is tied in well with my family situation and wanting to you know, not be on tour or not be away all the time, traveling up and down the country. You know, it's, it's coincided. The time in my life where I'm able to, I mean, Saturday, not musical related at all, but I probably lose a few followers here, but I support Manchester United. And I, it was the, a rare occasion where it was a 12.30 kickoff in the UK and I could, I could watch them here. I just went with a few mates, had a few beers and watched the football. And that was a Saturday night. I couldn't have, could, I, I mean, trying to make the best, best of a, of a yeah. situation because, you know, I do miss gigging, but also I had that cool opportunity and I know that. You know, I, these days I know that my money is coming from a, a slightly different place that's got a bigger upside. It's certainly, I mean, the, the, you've got to do more teaching. You've got to do more gigs if you want to earn more money. That's just, there's no way around it. But, yeah, you know, I'd say to anyone, I probably would say to everyone, just start a YouTube channel. It's not for everyone. And actually, a lot of people would think there's no way I want to do that. And fair enough, don't do that. But yeah, it's not for everyone. But. I, I don't really know much about TikTok, but this, there are ways to monetize things these days. Do podcasts, you know. So yeah. I, I, I do. I've done quite a few jingles, played on jingles for Adam Buxton, who's a big, he's got a big podcast in the UK. He's a comedian from, from the 90s who's, who's now known for this podcast. And it's a big podcast. And I think he gets, I think he does very well from it. These pe- those people, they get sponsorship and, you know, other opportunities through that. Um, but there are, just different ways these days that you can earn money that he certainly would not have ever thought that he'd make money that way you know same similar situation to me even 20 years ago but well that doesn't exist and there are ways now that you can do things that just is flabbergasting there's probably things for me that that i haven't really thought about and also virtual reality and artificial intelligence there's gonna be things like the iphone and youtube changed everything i I think there's still things on the horizon yeah. that are going to change things a yeah. bit more and open up opportunities for, you know, we're talking about musicians for musicians. So it's just, yeah. Keep have you, um, it, really. have you come across chat GPT? Yeah, I have. And I, I, I inputted, um, bass guitar, YouTube video ideas yesterday and it, it got, uh, there's a couple that went on the list. I'll tell you. So yeah, it makes, it's amazing how, yeah. Just yeah. like clever it is. I know it's like it's artificial intelligence and all this. Yeah. And it's like a step away from Terminator, basically. But it's yeah. like so totally. It's, it's I've I've done it myself. I've hundred percent done it myself. Um, yeah. For some YouTube videos, and it's like fair enough. I I I, I spoke to a friend of ours. Um, she does it, 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 where it would be useful in her job, and I said it to her. She's like, God, I'm not going to say this to anybody because this is going to put me out of a job, and. Well, it's not. It's not really going to put you out of a job because think about it. It's like I could put in, give me half an hour's worth of a podcast script to talk to Dan Hawkins and it could pull up 
all this stuff about Dan Hawkins from the darkness. Yeah, exactly. And then I'd yeah. be sitting here talking to you. So what's your brother Justin like? Do you oh, know what I, I mean? I, I, I would tell you, I'd make it up. I wouldn't want you to feel awkward. You know, got... <laughs> that would have been some crack. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a great, going. he's got a great YouTube channel, that guy. Have you seen he has a one? fantastic YouTube channel. He really does. And it's just him just talking. Just And, and again, I think that's taken over his main source of income. I, I think he was talking about that on one of his videos, how, how that's the yeah. case. And he's now, I think he started probably within 12 months, I think. I don't think he's oh, been yeah, going yeah. It's, a, it's It's a very, very new yeah. thing. And it's growing massively. And he, I think he's surprised about it, you know. Yeah. But again, it goes back to the whole thing Well, what you were saying earlier on about it being, um, look, now him being Justin Hawkins from The Darkness doesn't it's, hurt. No, he's really got a platform. He's certainly he's got, got a platform. platform already. However, if he was on there talking complete and utter shite about what he was actually looking at and and not making sense, he's able to break down those those, those videos, for example, that he'll he'll talk about and um he'll like what, what's the word like critique and yeah and uh, react to. He's reacting to them in an intelligent way, and even if he doesn't like it, he's like, yeah. okay, I don't like this, but here are some things that are working really really well, and he'll break it down in real intelligent. Yeah, way in a really it's, intelligent way that makes sense. So, it's not luck. That's not luck. That's hard work. And no. and he's, consistency. He's, he's a positive guy, and I think he just wants to spread love and positivity, and that's it comes across in his channel. And I don't think it hurts that he's English and he's got that side of things. So I think the Americans probably love that side of things. But you know, as you say, he's got a big following. I think I think he has a producer and people that help him with the show. Yeah, none of those things hurt, you, you know. No, so none he's, of those he's... things hurt. I wish I had them. Me too. I mean, I, I'm I'm a one. Most of my peers will call them. I mean, I, I wouldn't even put myself in the same like planet as some of these other people. Like Scott's Bass Lessons, he's got over a million subscribers. I've got approaching fifty thousand, which is not bad at all. Um, but yeah. you know, I think most people. I think he has a staff of thirty, and I think a lot of these big YouTube channels they they do they have big teams and actually mm. that's not what i want i don't want to manage people I, I just want i literally want to be doing what i'm doing now just you know with more with more numbers more numbers equals and i most of what i do is free you know i, I make free videos and, and i like that i like that people comment a lot and they like my lessons and that's great and then a tiny percentage of of those will will buy my stuff and that's that's the model really so obviously you want more numbers so that tiny percentage is a bigger number Exactly, and yeah. that that's the thing. I mean, actually, for anyone interested in this, um, you know, if you've not really checked out any of these things, I think the Four Hour Work Week is a pretty good book. It's probably quite outdated now, but that's the one I got into this. But there's another article which is also outdated but brilliant, which is called One Thousand True Fans by Kevin Kelly. That is essential reading for anyone who sort of doesn't quite understand, especially musicians. The premise is that. And I certainly thought this, you know, to, to be a musician earning money from, I don't know, the internet or what have you, you just, you need millions of, of fans. That used to be the thing. You need millions of fans. But if you have a thousand true fans, the definition of which it's just someone who loves everything you do, they'll buy your t-shirt, your, your first pressing of the vinyl, whatever, or in my case, your book and your, your course and all that. Well, if a thousand people are spending a hundred dollars on you or $200 or whatever, then that's all you need to aim for is that, that thousand. Forget the millions. And you can obviously scale that with the internet. You can scale that up and down. And that, to me, reading that, that, that was it. That was like, okay, well, that's, that's completely manageable. That's doable. And, yeah. and that, I think that's the thing. I think maybe people think they can't do it. But listen, if I can do it, anyone can do it. You know, I, I yeah. really mean that. Like if you just work hard at it, be consistent, everyone's got something like, I'm just looking around here. Look, I, oh, let me show you. It. This is really, really random, but this is a. Do you know those Funko Pop doll things? <laughs> oh, 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 yeah, you got one. That's Lemmy, by the way. I've Where got Eddie you Van Halen. There you go. I, I can almost guarantee that there's someone on YouTube that's got a channel about this or, or, or toys or whatever. I'm looking around. Mm -hmm. Certainly, music gear. Um, there's someone that makes money from teaching uh, how to make sourdough bread. I mean. The, for everything that you can possibly think of, yeah, there is a skill that someone has, and they find a way of, of you know, putting it, putting themselves out there, and and it's it's weird, but it's not for everyone. But you know, if even yeah, if even a few people do it, 
um, it, you, even if it's a side thing and you just earn a li- little bit, everyone can do it. You know? I know what you mean. I used to follow um, channels on YouTube that, honest to God, as a 30 year old man, I'm going to sound so pathetic. <laughs> but um, they were opening up, box, opening up packets of vintage Pokemon cards. And okay. just like you're saying, all they're doing is opening up the, the Pokemon cards and they have this trick where there's like 10 cards in the pack and they do two or three from the front and then that's how yeah. you open them because that's when the mega cool one is at the end and stuff. And it's 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 absolutely addictive. It's amazing because you're just yeah. like, oh, is he going to get this really cool shiny one that he's looking for? Um, Yeah, going completely off topic there. I mean, but, there's, um, there's, there's so many different niches and... Obviously, yeah. I think probably your audience, we can assume they're, they're musicians, but um, I, there's a couple of people that I've said, look, you know, you teach, you should do this thing. And they're like, you know what? I, I just don't like teaching. And I'm like, okay, you should not do it if you don't like it. Yeah, 100%. But, but those same people probably have something. They have an experience in their life. They have something else they're good at. Could or could not tie into music. You know, it doesn't have to be music. Everyone's got something, you know. Yep, and, my wife uh, last night was on a was on a course for um, weaning, because right. our okay, our, yeah, our yeah. daughter is yeah. yeah our daughter is eight and a half months old and she's now starting to eat different bits and bobs yeah. and yeah, yeah. um she bought a course online on weaning and then she was joining a webinar last night with yeah. that person having bought two of her books mm. it's it's mm. exactly like what you're saying is if, if you have a thing you can monetize it it doesn't matter and that's she special specializes in weaning um kids so like kids between the ages of six months and a, and and a year what can they eat how can you incorporate and it's such yeah. a it's such a uh like uh it, it goes beyond being like a niche idea it's a very 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 specific mm. so targeted audience but it's like it's so um, something people need though isn't it There's exactly like yeah it's so necessary and it makes such a difference but i mean I, i'd like um you know, if there's anyone listening, like what I'd love to see is I've seen a few vlog musician vlog sort of day in the life things and just people taking you around gigs and things, which to me, I couldn't think of anything worse than having to do a gig and also having to, to film and all that. But you have yeah. to be the right kind of person to do that. But you do. I would love to see those videos. Now, people, loads of people have done the one off kind of things of, of that. But, you know, just e- even like, so you look at Tim Pierce or even Justin Hawkins, they've got huge personalities, huge followings. But I want to just see someone like me. I was just a Joe Bloggs musician. Like I did some good gigs, but you know, no one knew who I was. Just I want to see that person, follow them round. And you have to be, you have to be learn about storytelling. And I suppose you would have to learn a little bit about filmmaking and either editing or you get someone else to do that. But and you know, even saying this is a lot of work. But there's someone out there that could do that even if they're Absolutely. not like famous or doing any good gigs and it would be amazing, you know? Um, yeah. There's, there, there's a platform called fan club. You ever heard of it? I haven't. Fan club is, I had the creator of fan club on one of the very, very first podcasts actually. And it is exactly what you're saying. It's musicians just like you or me more, more, more kind of targeted towards original um, music and stuff like that. But it's, where they can monetize their everything else. Yeah. So they've got they've got Apple Music and Spotify for their for their music and they've got uh, for for their songs and releases and they've got YouTube and the likes of Patreon for their 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 free videos or their monetized content. But then Fan Club is for people like exactly like what you said that want to see the behind the scenes, that want to see Yeah. Oh, how many spare cables do you take with it? to a yeah. gig and why yeah, do, you, yeah. do you know what I mean and how are you packing your gig bag and oh you're going to get a taxi today because you might fancy a pint afterwards okay that's cool and it's that it is that type of um content fan club yeah no I'll have to check it out I mean I, I actually do love YouTube now and I do study it I study all kinds of different niches and obviously there's the takeaway points so thumbnails are absolutely yeah. crucial so are titles mm. but I, I, I'm quite into sports but I saw this video like it was about it's some guy from America. It was like college athletics and it was shot put, something like this, something to do with the shot put. But the way he was just narrating and he's got clips from these collegiate meets, as they call them all, and yeah. sometimes the national thing. And just the way that he, he told the story and, and pulling in, you know, college records and just like 
editing and the storyline just had me gripped for this shot put video. And I think that that's the, that's the key if you want to do well on YouTube, which is why my channel's not massive. It's just because I just do a lesson. Here's, here's me and I edit it quick, as quick as I can because I've got to go and pick my daughter up. Uh, and, and I do I do the best I can with the resources I have, which is me and, and you know, not putting too much time in it. But the people that are doing really well, they're, they're thinking about it and they're, they're making a storyline, a script. The thumbnails are good and they're taking yeah. it seriously. I'm taking it seriously, but not like... You know, and I don't think I'm going to. Ch- I don't think I'm going to go down what I'm saying to do a storyline thing because yeah. it's just so much work. I don't. I don't have the it's skills for it. It's it's not necessary for the thing I'm doing. But I'm sure yeah. there are so many people out there. You know, friends of mine. That I'd love to. I'd love to hear what they're doing, and 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 they would be brilliant at it. You know. Yeah, but then there, there you go. You said it yourself. In that, have you any interest in shot put outside of? Do you just come across this fella? Yeah, I mean, not really, no. Exactly. So he's obviously put an awful lot of effort into making that video so that it yeah. targets as wide of an audience. There's something in there yeah. for everyone. So yeah. he might have millions upon millions upon billions and trillions of subscribers that are firemen or that are nurses or that are every single walk of life. Whereas I guarantee if you were to take an audit of the 50,000 people that are subscribed to you on YouTube, it's going to be a far more targeted audience and people are there because they want to be there because they value yeah. your content as opposed to the, scri- the subscribers that are there for the guy yeah. with the shot put that are just there because, oh, that was funny. It could be, it could be something as simple as like a comedian. Yeah. And he's like, oh, he said something really funny there. That's a really, really good one-liner to then spit back out at someone else that's heckling. Them. Uh-huh. So there could be any amount any amount of walks of life that I've, 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 I've clicked onto that, but yours is probably. Yeah. I mean, you, you get, uh, figures about audience, don't you? And, uh, yeah, I think, I, I think I'm pretty sure where my audience is. Cause the thing with music and bass is that it appeals to everyone, doesn't it? But I think because I'm a bit older and I, I'm not really going down the entertainment, uh, look at me thing. It's quite, it's, let's say it, it's quite boring so yeah. the the older people which is great for me because they've got a bit of money they buy my courses every now and again and but i've got quite a few different walks of life and my instagram page has sort of grown a bit over the last year from sort of nothing to to like thirty four thousands, and and it looks like my biggest growing market is jakarta you know so which is quite right. close to singapore and it's what the third or fourth biggest population in the world is indonesia so you know, diff- different markets and you probably should know who your audience is. But for me, it's like, look, music is universal. It just absolutely is. Learning bass is, is not going to be different if you're in Indonesia and you're 13 or if you're in America and you're a 60 or 70 year old professor. And I've, I've been emailed by three or four or five professors for some reason for America. I don't know. It's cool. Right. It's really cool. Yeah. Some NASA guys and yeah, it's, you, you hear from all kinds really. And but music is is, is absolutely is for everyone, isn't it? Yeah, it is indeed. And I it do want to. I, I I don't feel like I have an overarching goal or anything, you know, to conquer the world or anything. But I would absolutely love to spread the word a bit. I would like to get more girls and women involved, though, because bass. I think you you lose them a bit to other instruments, but the ones that love bass love bass. But you can see from yeah. my stats that I've like it's most it's like ninety five percent men um, that watch my thing. Which, you know, so that, that would be cool. I'm, I'm certainly not working towards doing that, but that would be good. You know, I've got a daughter now. I'm trying to get her, her involved in bass, but um, yeah. yeah, that would be something that I'd like Very to do. Very cool. Well, speaking about your, your, your online course and stuff, yeah. so you're saying everyone should, should, everyone should have a think about what they can do. Say, John, we're going to call him John. John has decided that he is going to start teaching bass and he's going to follow in your footsteps. He's going to teach, he's going to make his own bass course. Mm-hmm. What is the first thing that he needs to do? That's a great question. I mean, so, you know, the, the way I did it, which was possibly a bit back to front, was alongside the gigs and the teaching that I was doing, I was going to set up this online bass courses. And what I would do is just try to build an audience first. So, my thing was not really YouTube. My thing was to try and get people on Google because I'd had a bit of experience with the remote session thing. So try to get people finding me on, on Google and then they can find my website. 
Now, my website didn't have anything to buy on it for the first seven years. So, uh, you know, I, I, I had a lot of work with the other, st the music. So I, I didn't quite take this whole thing that seriously until maybe 2019, I started to do the YouTube channel. So John would have to, I think YouTube is a good place to be for, for most musicians. I, I still think that's the case. John should be, or, you know, maybe there's a different channel, whether it's TikTok or I don't even know, Snapchat, whatever, but whatever it is, he needs to be specific and also consistent that's the thing like my channel starts so i had like um beginning of the pandemic 2020 i think i had 400 subscribers and the big number is a thousand isn't it you get monetized yeah. at a thousand so i was like okay so all the gigs were were gone and i was I had my laptop and i just did like 100 hours work in one week the first week on revamping the site that was that and then also upping it to two videos a week. And that's what I did every week. I haven't missed a video since that 2020. And I've actually just gone down to two a week, but I now do, I now do one a week and six shorts, which are actually easier to produce than the, than yeah. the big one. But the, the main thing is, is consistency. And then I was writing the blogs as well on the website. The thing is, the website, I, I own that. Uh, I, I, I'm not beholden to YouTube. If they, if they change an algorithm here or there, it's not going to affect the website. So that's the thing. So um, it's not, you know, it's not like a vanity metric. Like you, you, no one knows apart from me how many people go to my website and it's, it's a fair, decent amount. It's enough, you know? And um, so I think, it, I, I do think actually having a website's a big deal. I think that's still a big deal to do. You can house anything you need to on that, but then you would need to get traffic to it either from Google or from YouTube, I think is still a good place to do that so yeah. it's all about consistency really not just doing even three months ago and that was good you've got to continue and that's i think i think that will you know let's just say there are 10 people that really really want to do this i think yeah. there are seven that would give up because it's yeah. just a bit too much work and it hasn't happened but it, nothing had happened to me to me for quite a few years i i by the way i wasn't working very hard on it so if i'd worked like relentlessly for a a long time and nothing had happened you might go okay well that's that's not going to work let's try something else but yeah i think it will i think it will if you if you're good enough and you know you're good at communicating and you're consistent with it I, I do think anyone can do it you know yeah so yeah it's basically just grow your audience and direct the traffic in yeah. the kind of the way you I want mean, to it is for me i mean the, the audience side of things is you, you need that you you do need that you know of course you do. Yeah, absolutely. Of course you do. And then, so in terms of websites and stuff like that, so like when I started out on this, I didn't know. I It, it, it was like a complete and utter mystery. And I would have considered myself a reasonably tech savvy or at least tech aware person. And yeah. it was only when I started hearing about all these things like online courses and stuff that I realized that I really, really wasn't anywhere near as aware as, as I thought I was. So... John is after building up his YouTube and he's now wanting to direct people to somewhere where he can, he's now wanting to have somewhere to direct people to. And he's now wanting to have loads of content that he can sell to people. So like, what, what do you need to do? Are there, is there a, a specific um, course hosting, hosting service that you would recommend or yeah. what, do, do, you know, do you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I, I think there are options. Like there was a time, have you heard of Udemy? Yeah, so that U D E M Y dot com, Udemy. Um, there was a time, I think, as with many of these things, if you adopted it early enough, that you could get on that, and if you did well, you could you could just do brilliantly on that and earn loads and loads of money. Then they like put the course down. If it was a hundred pounds, now it's ten, and you get you get fifty percent. So it got like that. And that's the thing: if you don't own your website, that can happen. So. My preference is to house whatever it is, whether it's your book or your guide or your course or whatever, is to house it on your website. So people, though, also do Teachable. The Teachable is another one. Um, you know, Mary Spender, she's really great. I think I she has her courses there and not her site. So there are options. There are places that you can go that, that house courses. I house mine on my own site. Um, therefore, I can control it and I don't have to give any money to anyone else it goes all to me um you know if you think about the 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 books that i write which i love doing 
Amazon get a cut, my publisher gets a cut, then I get the cut. So, you know, you need to obviously more sales and, and they deal with that, which is great. I don't yeah. have to deal with that. But um, I, I, I do happen to think that it's a good thing to have your own site and, and, and host anything you need to there because the technology is there. It wasn't there before. <laughs> now, it's just like, you know, WordPress, I would recommend WordPress rather than um, Squarespace or anything like that. They're really good, but I think like 30 something percent of the, of the internet is run on WordPress sites and you can connect different things. I don't know anything about coding or anything like that, but you can get software that helps you with these things. Yeah. Or you get someone to help you with all that stuff. Um, Absolutely. But, you know, anyone, can, you know, it's a bit meta, but you can learn how to do that. You can learn get a course on how to make courses or you could I know books, it's funny isn't it books podcasts I've I've read them all really because I knew nothing I literally yeah. nothing about computers or even like you know my little setup here when I'm recording bass I had to learn how yeah. to use all this stuff and and logic but if I can learn how to do this technology side of thing anyone can you just got to be um ready to for a steep learning curve I think yeah that's the thing but if it's specifically courses you want to do I think most of the sites now probably host them on their own, on their own platform. Yeah. That's the main takeaway. Have your own platform. Fantastic. And is it just um, WordPress that you use without, do you use any external like plugins for? Um, yeah, I've got various courses. few plugins. I mean, you just search for these things and you find them that, 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 that of course, there's so many for, for WordPress. It doesn't even really matter what it is. Just yeah. you look at the reviews and, and what have you. And, and that works. I mean, look, I'm not going to lie. There's so much work involved in all of this. But, but now for me, I run this entire business myself. And, and it's kind of, it's not that much work. You know, I don't really work. I work, work for maybe two, three hours every day. And I take most of the weekends off. And, and you know, like I've sold a course now. I, the only one notification I allow myself on my phone when it beeps is if I get, if I sell a course. And one just happened just then. So it's like. It's bonkers to me. I I don't actually do. This is the sort of next step of my business. I I don't do any adverts or marketing. I don't have a team. I I don't do any of that stuff. Um, yeah, which is the next step. You probably should have that if you're a business. But yeah, um, I'm not very good at doing my YouTube videos and go, actually the one I filmed today does have at the end a call to action, which is like if you need some bass guitar exercises, I've written this book. And I feel a bit. I think most musicians do. They feel a bit. Nerve, not nervous, just wrong about networking and marketing. Completely, uh, and I still feel like that. And I think people like what I do because I don't go on about my stuff. But if I do a video and I mention my course, some people buy it. I don't get thousands of views or tens of thousands of views, but if you get a few thousand views and like a couple of people, don't have any people buy it? So that's that's a massive area of improvement for me. It's just being a bit more upfront about what i have to offer people because you know i write these things so that they can get better at base so it's, in a way yeah. you're doing them a favor they're doing you a favor but you're also doing them a favor so i've got to get better at that um and but there is a fine line there is a balancing act to be done really because no one wants to be marketed to that's just no that simple is as thing. that that is the thing and that was uh one one, one thing that again it, it comes back to how 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 stuff has evolved and how it, it didn't this sort of ideology and all this didn't exist 10 years ago that i always I, I can't remember the first person i saw that had an online course but i was like i, I saw him and they were like a youtuber and i was like what do you mean you've got an online course yeah like a university thing like you're teaching in university and it was like it's it's it's, it's yeah mad. and it is that 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 thing is that that was the the kind of the light bulb thing because like you say, I wasn't being sold to. It was just, yeah. oh, I like that lad. Oh, he's got a course. What? What do you mean a course? Yeah. And it just got you interested. Yeah. I um, think, you know, Paul Davids. Is that his name? Paul Davids. He's a massive guitar uh, YouTuber. Is he? Yeah. European. I can't think of he's think, Dutch or. I think he's Dutch. Yes, he's Dutch. Yeah. Now he's um, got a massive following and he's a very talented videographer and, and um, you know, storyteller. And yeah. edit it is all brilliant what he does, but and it's it's sort of that's perfect YouTube because it's education meets entertainment, and it yeah, looks exactly. so great, and his voice is great, everything's good about it. Yeah, but if you follow the the trail, he's got some courses, and he's got millions and millions of views. So, and I think I followed the link actually, and it's someone else who who d does his courses for him, and presumably his marketing. So, 
for someone like him, he could probably do that. You know, he can get other people to do these things for him. But if you're, yeah. you know, our mate John, who's starting up this uh, fictional course, uh, or, or even me, I mean, I'm, I'm not a fictional person, but I am doing it all myself. And yeah, there comes yeah. a time where actually probably good to get other people involved in the business side of things. But you absolutely, I do everything myself and, it, and I really don't work. That's the other thing for me. The holy grail for me was always, and this is source of reading. It sounds very scammy, the four hour work week, that book, but, and it, but it's kind of a productivity book, really. And if you yeah. can get systems running in place, then someone can buy a course whilst you're doing a podcast. And, the, and it seems, still seems like witchcraft to me, the whole process of that. But it does happen. Yeah. And, and you just feel like you're kind of get, getting away with it more than that, Ness. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I um, from 2003 to when that pandemic hit and I did my last gig, I mean, excuse me, I was working hard, you know. It is hard work to be a musician. Like, first of all, let's say you're, you're depping for a function band. I would turn up with these function bands with like unbelievable players in it, guys that, you know, springs to mind. Julian Brown played with Massive Attack the night before, and you're playing with these, these kinds of people. And maybe you've never met some of the band and it's a new band and, and you've got to, you've got to do a set. So you've got to put in the work for that. You'll know some songs, but you won't know other songs. So yeah it's there's no rehearsal you just turn up and play and so oh, you've yeah. got to be prepared so i was good at that and hopefully still am of, of putting in the work being prepared then it's driving to the gig and it's waiting around there's a lot of work involved in and time i think that's the main thing so for me it's like this this holy grail of being able to earn money and have biggest resource in life which for me is time you know and that for me means with my family um because that's how I find myself being a very family man now, which is great. You know, um, that's kind of what I want. And I don't really want to be away um, too much. So where I am is perfect. But the other thing is I'm an old man now, but, but you know, as a musician, I, I always wanted to be a footballer, didn't I? But problem was no talent, but um, I, I'd be, I'd be retired by now. What you do, you know, even if you're like, let's say you're like, a fourth division football or even even championship you earn good money but that's it over now what do you do as a musician look my favorite bass player is tony levin look he's i think he's got to be approaching 80 leland sklar that guy with the big beard and you know, all these all these people that are just older and still doing it because you can as a musician that's the so i i, I don't think my playing days are over I, i'm like you when i grow up i want to be a rock star you know who, who, who <laughs> I knows i still have you know aspirations to to do some cool things and and also for me like lots of ambitions to play on some because you know, i can still do a remote session at any time here uh, i want to play on some number ones and stuff i still got things i want to do musically that are real dreams and passions because that's we all do music because we it's like a it's a love it's beyond that actually isn't it it's just a need and a i still yeah. feel that like i um I don't necessarily feel that when I'm recording a video for YouTube, like, you know, it's like, oh no, I've got to do this now. Am I going to? Yeah, am that's I your do... nine to five. That's, you well, it's it's my, it's my. Let me work this out. It's my ten, ten to eleven thirty stroke midday. I I only film two two hours a week, so I I don't do much. I, you know, Amazing. just to, and that's the thing, I suppose. Like, if anyone does want to start a YouTube channel. I probably do like five to six hours a week on my YouTube channel. That's probably what I do, right? Yeah. Um, and that's nothing. And and I'm I'm doing okay on YouTube. I, I'm I'm not going to be doing amazingly well because it's not enough work. You know, no. it's not that you get what you put into it, and I don't put in that much. But I don't really want to. I don't want to do. I don't want to do more. I don't want to get burned out. So you can do these things on your terms. You know, you don't have to. You don't have to go crazy doing it. Yeah. And that's that. In fairness, though, so 50,000 subscribers is, I would say. Just shy of I, that. I, well, I would love to be at that. I am currently at less than 60, as in not 60,000, 60, 60, 60, 60, 60. That's it. Yeah. Yes. And so, how many videos do you do a week? Well, see, this is the thing is that I'm still trying to get into the consistency of it really okay. still trying to get it and work it into my um my your life my workflow your life work and, and life yeah that's 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 the problem with yeah so like my 
not necessarily to you. I mean, you, you're doing a great podcast. That's something that I, I think you're obviously a bit more committed to. But if, if anyone yeah. wants to do well on YouTube, it's you need you need a strategy. You need to know like an overarching what does your channel. What is it doing? Like uh, Mr. Beast, you know him? He's 135 uh, yeah. million. I, I've had students that tell me I look like Mr. Beast and I don't really know why. But you know. A little bit. I see it a little bit. But I, uh, you look at his first videos, it was all gaming, wasn't it? And now he's, it, it just completely pivoted to this other thing he does. But I think it's good to know that like, this is roughly what I want to do. Think about playlists. Like for me, I've got like bass technique, music theory, bass songs to learn, you know, reading, yeah. groove, this uh, sort of thing. And that really opens up your mind to the different categories that you have. Then you have like a hundred different ideas and then you've got to have like a content idea strategy. And then it's just a case of going, okay, I'm going to, I, th- I would say about a, w- a video a week is probably what you want to, to grow. Yeah. Um, find your sweet spot between the time you have, you know, you've got a young daughter like I had, and it's just a question of, and that's a lot of people don't talk about this. It's It's like, you have a life that involves, in your case, a, a young daughter, and, and you you can't ignore that. Everyone's got their different lives. You know, a lot of people that you do my stuff. That you know, some are retired, some are going to college. You know, everyone's got their. You've got to, in their case, your base practice has got to exist in and around your life. It's no good just saying, you know, you're idle did six hours a day. Well, that's not going to happen for most people. And Mr. Beast would, would do 20 hours a day on YouTube. Well, that's not going to happen for most people. Yeah. So you've got to plan things out, I think. But, but it is unavoidable. You do have to be consistent with it. And you have got to have good ideas, titles, thumbnails. They're, they're definitely something to, to consider. And yeah. I, I mean, I, the thing that I love, this is a bit of a weird cognitive bias, but the, the thing that I love to see in people's YouTube channels is behind the scenes stuff. Like, like you say, the cables and what things you use, and yeah, and I don't know, e- even like things that you've got in your studio. But I never share that stuff because I think people won't want to know. I was so like I'm I'm looking it's around weird. your yeah. So for anyone just listening to this on uh, the audio podcast, I had the the video will be on YouTube, so go and check it out on YouTube. But like, so behind you, you've yeah. got there's a nylon string guitar with a string broken. There yeah, is. There is. I'm on it. A, I need. Uh, there is what looks like what's that on the it looks like a like a you know the phantom of the opera mask no that's an upright this come yeah that what's that that, 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 that that's my um got it's a hat i've got one piece of merchandise that's my on, that's my logo online bass player that's the that's 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 one of one um but look, i look, love it and look, look at this this right just to get geeky for a second and this is a fretless bass guitar yeah oh. No frets. Love it. That was bought from the bass gallery a few years ago. This used to belong to Pino Palladino, right? And this was on a Joan Armour trading tour. Some guy got in touch with me. Um, he reckons he saw this bass on a Gary Newman show in 1983 or something like that. Now, I think this is quite interesting, but I, I don't really do behind the scenes type stuff. But you should. I mean, so like looking to the side here, which you can't quite see, but I've got. I've got seven bases just here. That's, yeah. uh, that's a really cool NS upright. And these little, well, black things here, these are really great Warwick um, flight case things. I've got another like load of bases there. I've got a cool base to the side. So, yeah, I mean, it's like I would literally love to see a live stream of, of someone who's got a studio like me, but I don't think people will care about my thing. It's, it's just a weird thing. Like I, I'm still naturally quite introverted and, and naturally quite like, well, no one's going to care about my thing, but I, I think that's not a good way to think about it because yeah. what I say, I, I remember when Twitter first came out, right. And I didn't quite get it, but then, then Andy Murray was posting about what he ate and his workout routines. And I was like, this is amazing. This is the best thing ever. I want to know that yeah. stuff. <laughs> that's yeah. the thing. It's like, you know, I, I look at people's stuff and I, I want to know all about that stuff. So that's another area. Maybe I can. But then I don't always want to. I'm a bit old, old fashioned. I don't always want to like overshare things. You know what I mean? So it's I, kinda... I, I, and talk about yourself, and you almost feel like you're yeah. kind of someone's yeah. really excited to see your video, and then it's just you putting across what you want to say. And yes, you're kind of you feel like you're interrupting their day. I I completely get you. I completely I, I, I get think, you. I think my 
sort of persona on YouTube anyway, my, my sort of mantra, if you like, is to give value to the person watching it. So yeah. I, I'm not really that interested in showing off or talking about myself too much. You, have, you sometimes have to do a bit, but it's more like I want to show someone this thing that they can do that I can explain to them that will change it will change their life in some way. And, and it will, because we know as musicians that if you learn a new lick on the, or a new technique, it's like, it does change you. It, especially if you've been playing for a while, if you do, like if I transcribe a bass line that I love and I figure out, oh, it's actually, it's going to the ninth. That's amazing. I haven't done that before over this chord. It's like, it's a rush. It's just amazing. So if I could give that to someone, then I've done my job. So I yeah. think I've tried to do that so much that, that I've I've probably shied away a bit of showing some of the behind the scenes stuff. But then again, you know, I don't know. I think it would be a, you, you get a bit lazy as well because uh, you I don't know if you can see it. There's that's my camera right there, and that's the the, the light here. So the the studio is set up for me to come in and press a few buttons and be ready to 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 record. Yeah, for, yeah, for yeah. the for the YouTube stuff or Same the, here, yeah. or the courses if I, you know, if I'm doing new ones. Yeah. And it's like, um, and I'm not, I wouldn't call myself a, much of a videographer or a filmographer. Is that, I don't know if they call them that, but just, I, d I don't love cameras. I don't, I don't really want to have to, have to do, B-roll is something you should do, but I'm, I'm a bit lazy. I don't want to do another shot of something. I'm sure there's probably like, like, this is actually my second camera. That's my iPhone, yeah. the big one, 13 Pro Max. And it's brilliant. It's my second angle camera. Sure, there's probably yeah, like a, yeah, yeah, that probably a gimbal or something that you could, but I don't know about that. But I was thinking of doing a bit more of that kind of stuff and just, but is that better for a live stream thing? I don't know. But, you know, talking about this, you, you try these things out and you see if something sticks, if people like it, like you said before, shorts. So I, I was, I didn't really understand what shorts were until the end of last year. And I did a few. And, and the shorts caused my channel to, to grow a lot. I had like, nice. I just happened to have a video, a main video that did well. And then I tried with shorts and my views went like 80,000 a month to like half a million a month, which is the most I've ever had. It's gone down a bit now and they, they're monetizing shorts now. So monetizing shorts occurs, I think next month. I, I, I don't earn my, a channel. My size doesn't earn. A huge amount from youtube at all it's certainly not a salary it's not you know it's not yeah. worth it but hopefully people come in and buy books and courses and things like that but yeah but you know that i think there probably there could be a time where where the figure that you get from the from the ad revenue especially if shorts are paying out can actually be a, a revenue an income stream an income thread and you know i know this is a music career podcast so that's quite an interesting thing to talk about is like i've always had it to think about it like that. So you've got different threads of income for me. One was teaching. Um, and then you've got playing and even within playing, you've got, well, reading gigs and gigs where you turn up and you have to just make stuff up on the spot involving different yeah. skills and then workshop. I did, uh, like 12 years in, it's called Albert's band, the Royal Albert hall. They have a education band and we used to do the teenage cancer trust weeks and just brilliant work. I used to absolutely love that. And that's a different skill. And, different threads, you know, different strings to your bow, if you like. And with the online thing, you, you, you also have that. And it looks like uh, YouTube isn't, isn't a brilliant revenue stream for me, but if my views go up and, you know, maybe things start to grow, that's the other thing. Yeah. I went from 400 to a thousand, this is in 2020. And then it went, it went up, not ma not exponentially, but it started to go up to more pleasing numbers, if you like, you know, you're starting to get a return on all the work you put into it. Yeah. And, um, you know, I, I'm still going to continue with it. I, I, I wouldn't mind. I'll be honest with you. I wouldn't mind a bit extra. I remember, I remember a guy, one of the distribution companies, the gear ones in the UK, and he was talking to me about the Anderton's channel, you know, the Anderton's um, YouTube channel. Very, very well. And this yeah. was, this was a few years ago. And apparently they were, they were earning like a good five figures a month from YouTube, you know, AdSense. And that's pretty decent and massive channel, probably mo making more now. See more people working on the channel. They've got to pay more people, but I don't know. Like, um, for me, the YouTube itself isn't the revenue stream, but 
it can be. And maybe I should start to think about it a bit more like that, you know? Yeah. Well, Rome wasn't built in a day, in fairness. Yeah, I think that's the other thing is that you've got to be prepared to be in that. If you're doing this sort of online thing, even if it's, you know, remote sessions, you've got agencies these days like Sound Better, but I, I, I do, I'm signed up with them, but I also just word of mouth really for me. And I don't put any, any work for that anymore because I'm doing this a lot more. So just sessions will yeah. come in. But you're absolutely right. You've got to just stick at the thing it is that you're doing and, and work. I used to send like 20 emails a day to people back in the day. And, and, you know, two people will get back to you, but then you get some work and, you know, I used to, I used to give them some people sessions for free and some people half price and all this, and you build work that way. And you sort of have to do what you got to do really to, you know, I was on the sort of coal face of, of music for a long time, just doing gigs. I, I've never done anything else. I've had like maybe one or two summer jobs, but that's all I've done is music and you, you have to do, or bass playing, you have to do what you got to do really. Sometimes yeah. it's gigs you don't like, um, you know, and I, I suppose I've been in it so long um, that I, I saw an opportunity with this, with this YouTube yeah. online thing. I, I love it. I absolutely love it. Yeah. Brilliant. It's one of my big goals for this year is to to sort out my, my um, online-edness. Yeah. I, I mean, I think it's like anything else. If there's people that want to get good at bass this year, uh, of which there are many that follow my thing, well, it's, it's making the commitment and it's not as easy as going, you've got to work harder because these, you know, if you've got a kid, you've got a job, well, what do you do? You've got to carve exactly. out time somehow and it's, and it's hard, you know, but it's, it can be done. And, you know, sometimes it might be, I don't know, you know, getting up earlier, going to bed later, whatever it is, you know, I found like when I was doing my website at the beginning of the pandemic, I just got really into it. I was just doing hours and hours. Just, it's bad for my back probably or whatever. It was just, uh, just got it. You get into it. You get into the flow of it, and you sort of enjoy it because you're working towards your own, your own thing. I think, and yeah, y- you can do it. You can definitely do it. You know, yeah, I'm the same. I've I've done most of this myself. I've had input from here and here and there, and but mainly it's it's all like you say, I, it's all, it's off your own back. I mean, you got in contact with me via Instagram, didn't you? And and I, yeah. you know, I've checked out a couple of people, and you've had some unbelievable people on this podcast, and. This is probably a slow week for you. That's why you got me. But I mean, not in the slightest. I mean, it's latest. like it, it's brilliant. Podcasts like this are amazing because yeah. you just, it's long form. I love that. I love the fact that it's, you just have a chat and see what happens. And people, most probably, you know, you go to the gym or you, this, I, I would do it in, uh, so my, I would drive, I moved from pearly, area which is sort of south london e to west london all my teaching remained there so i was in a car often like three to four hours three times a week and i was just like yeah this is too much but i would just listen to podcasts and i would love that yeah. part of it and that's the thing it's just brilliant you can just <laughs> you just learn so much so for me it was just i was listening to a lot of um you know i guess things like this people who were who have done the thing i wanted to do and i was listening to that also the tim ferris podcast and other interesting things to try and make myself cleverer, <laughs> more cleverer. Yeah, that's a really good point, though, because it's like it's one of those things where I, I up until just before Christmas, I still used to go to I, I, I still teach as my main source of income. So I've yeah. got, I've, I have students every every evening and I've got I'm fortunate enough now I've got a little studio here in the back um, of my house. But I up until Christmas, I was still going out one day a week to, to students and like uh, like 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 you're saying the traveling to and from what it, it can be traveling to lessons it can be traveling to gigs it can be traveling to yeah. Yeah, guitar strings yeah. whatever it is if there's nothing else that you can be doing with that time but you're still putting the time out doing something like listening to a podcast listening to your four hour work week on an oh, audio yeah, book yeah. listening to all these other things yeah use the time to your advantage um that was it, it's exactly what i done i used to listen to the graham cochran podcast yeah um, I, I love him he's great yeah fantastic i bought one of his Absolutely courses fantastic. got one of his mixing yeah. courses that's the thing you know, i from i that. i got one of his um courses when i signed up to, to kajabi so yeah but, yeah. but i mean uh, that's a really good point like there was a time that i was listening to talk sports you know talk sport i've heard of it's it just just a sports you know broadcaster and I, I love them they're brilliant and it would just be like you know there'll be a football match and then drunk people will basically ring at the end and talk about why why their team shouldn't have lost and i was like 
this is cool. I do like this, but this isn't doing anything for me. This is like my brain is not growing by listening to this. No offense to talk sport. They're brilliant. But I was like, I could use this time in a different way. And, and there was like yeah. a real shift from that point to audio books and, and podcasts. And, and you know what, that's, if there's anything that people can get from this podcast, listening to me blabbering on is, um, is like, it sounds really simple, but books, like I read a lot on Kindle. Yeah. Books, podcasts, and audio books have just have been everything for me. They've changed my life. And, and I suppose online courses you could put into that category as well but just like um the the way we're in the information age aren't we and the the way you can try and um close all the noise out and get the good stuff that you want to learn about it can change your life it certainly has changed my life i've learned everything that i need to know to do this thing through those channels through books and you know i still read them like non-fiction books i still read them all the time to try yeah. and work out you know what i need to know and that that's changed my life actually yeah. That's that, that 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 that's a lovely thing. It's a it's a really lovely thing. It's nice to know that um someone else is is in the or is in the same position as as me for stars. And it's also nice to know that you see all this what like like what you're saying. You're putting out all your free content on YouTube, and you're kind of like yeah, it, it 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 in a in a roundabout way. It's it's a means to an end for you, but you're hoping that it will be valuable to someone. You're an example of all the free content, not necessarily free, but all of the content that has been put out there, you're, you're using it. You've used it as it's meant to be used. And now you're living it. Do you know what I mean? So it's, 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 it's proof. It's, it's living, walking, breathing proof that what you're doing, what you're putting out there is actually working and it's actually worthwhile doing. Yeah. I mean, I love bass and I love teaching. So by doing the thing I do, I get to get to play bass, you know, I get to explore it. I get to think about it. And that's just, it's just good for me. It's good for my brain. It's good for creativity, you know? And, yeah. um, you know, I, I'm, I've been in this for a long, 20 years this year, actually. And yeah. I'm in this for the long run, you know, and that's the thing. It's finding something that you, you love doing. I can't imagine getting bored, bored of bass. Cause the thing is, I, one thing is that by teaching other people, I, I guess I don't get to really push my skills as far as I might otherwise do so i yeah. i know I, I know that there's a lot that i can get better at in my own playing and that still excites me that that's the case you know so so i yeah. i don't see myself stopping anytime soon well please don't because your your content has been absolutely fantastic and i i, I love you. it when i when i got in touch with you uh, I, I i loved that ibanez bass i'm an absolute ibanez fanatic yeah the I've, road star bass i've got it just out of shot here it is so this story about this base is quite amazing, really. So I'm in Singapore, and yeah. I've got a load of nice bases, a lot of vintage bases. Uh, I started yeah. to buy vintage bases in about 2008, cheap late 70s ones. But yeah, you know that um, Fender, Tarot. yeah, Fender Jazz, Fender Precision, uh, Music Man, Stingray, all these vintage ones, and I love them. But I wanted to get a really, really cheap base, just so people could see hopefully some decent sounds coming from like a really cheap bass rather than that yeah. uh, you see a lot of Federas and 10,000 pound basses. Nothing wrong with them. They're amazing. But I just wanted people to see a cheap bass. So here in Singapore, there's a shop called Sui Lee and it's a big old, you know, music shop. You go in there and they've got all the latest basses. So I, I went down there and I was like, right, I'm going to come away with a, the cheapest bass that I l- like here. So I tried everything. Ibanez, Fender, just everything that was in the shop and I, I just didn't they're all brand new bases i didn't yeah. like any of them and i was like oh that's a shame and on my way out of the shop i saw this sign and it's this in singapore you, you probably went to them you've got these unbelievably amazing malls they call them shopping malls like really like latest things but this is kind of an old yeah. one and in the corner like over there was it's like um in gremlins you know that film from the 80s where yeah, yeah. The guy's dad goes to this tiny little shop to get a to get the the present for his son. He ends up getting that. It was like I went to the guitar equivalent of that, and I saw this Ibanez. Yeah. I was like, oh, you know, I know, I know that old Ibanez is supposed to be quite good to play. Plugs yeah. it in, and I just instantly it felt amazing to play. And I was like, yeah. oh no, like what's the price of this? And my wife's always like, you got too many bases, and 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 I'd arrange for her to come and meet me. She ended up buying it for me for, for Christmas because it was just before Christmas. 
which I couldn't believe because she's like, you got too many bases, but that was very nice of her. And it was about like 350 pounds or something like that. Yeah. And, it, you know, I, I got, had a bit of work done to it, put some new pickups in, but it's a cheap, it is a cheap base and it's one of the best bases I own. And that was the thing. It's like, well, I bought another one. I bought a, another from the very same shop. I went in there again and bought another Ibanez, which I haven't shown anyone yet. And I just need to do a bit of work with it. But, but yeah. I'm now, I now love these old Ibanez bases. I just, yeah, me too. I'm, I'm absolutely upset. So they're I've, brilliant. Uh, and just the craftsmanship is brilliant and fantastic. Yeah. I, that, I think that's the thing is like, you don't have to spend a lot of money to get a quality instrument. I, actually a lot of new instruments like Sire are also really good. I think it's like a golden age of, of playing an instrument because you've got free education and you've got cheap, but good sounding gear. There's just sort of no excuse to. Yeah. For it's, it's, it's the difference in the, the, um, or the quality um control what am i trying to say oh i i i I had i had a point that i always say when when people are asking me about like oh like the difference between quality and price nowadays is is not like when i was learning you'd go and get a guitar from argos absolutely yeah yeah harley benton wasn't really a thing that was my first one woolworths i think yeah (laughs) and now harley benton guitars are like fantastic yeah like exactly. or, or can be made to play fantastic absolutely do you know what I mean? yeah so i think let's uh start finishing up absolutely um is there anything done at the moment that you're working on now yeah i mean so I, I, the way i do it is that i'm always working on something so like um i write for that publishing company fundamental changes so at the moment i'm writing a kind of scale triad arpeggio exercise book for them um i am then doing my I think one of the big things for bass players especially is, or a lot of my audience anyway, is music theory and, and w- how to use it. So I'm writing a big course about that. That's going to be good. Um, so it's the, it's the book. It's the course. It's continuing to do the YouTube stuff. And so, yeah, still sort of New Year's resolution-y type vibes. And for me, I'm just, yeah, trying to, trying to find a couple of areas that I'm not good in and try to get better at them. And I think YouTube is one of those areas. I, I enjoy doing it, but if I'm going to do it, let's try and do it a little bit better. So it's trying to do that as well and come up with better ideas and um, better thumbnails, better titles, see if I can maybe get some help. Cause you know, I think that's always good if you can get collaborate with some people that can help you out in these things. So yeah, I'm always writing a book and I'm always writing a course. So Fair play. So I love it. it. I love it. That's it. I'd love to be in your position, but that is uh, that's absolutely well, excellent. Let me just also say, you said you're 30. Well, I, I'm 42 next month. I started, you know, when my first, my first book I wrote uh, when I was 37. And I remember it because my wife went back to work and we had a nine-year-old, nine-month-old daughter. So she was, it, when she was napping, I'd write a bit of the book and I'd just write whenever I could, got the book out and so like we're talking 38 was the was the sort of first fruits of my online endeavors that were not the remote session bass playing thing and just ever since then you know things have started to go up and up for me and you know so you you can be older than me and do this you can be young don't worry just get started you know get started get it done. always have your side thing going until the other thing happens and and it will if you, if you want it bad enough and you work hard enough it, it will mate I, I think that's absolutely amazing advice so it is. Yeah, that's fantastic advice um, let's head into a quick fire round now of just some stupid questions that make sure. no sense <laughs> or, or, or just purely for, for, for the crack sorry I forgot to give you a bit of warning of this, of this before we started that way. I always finish off with, a, with a, a quick fire round of just random questions just purely for the crack they're kind of like icebreakers but not at the start. Okay. If that makes sense. The ice has been broken, <laughs> so, but let's carry on. Exactly. Yeah. Let's let's make sure it's good and well and truly broken. So question number one. This always gets people that are on on, on, on YouTube and and do do courses and, and, and stuff like that. What is your job title? I still go for musician. Just bog standard musician, yeah. not in, no bells or whistles. I yeah. like it. Uh, definitely like definitely it. not YouTuber. No, I, I, I understand where you're coming from with that. I don't, yeah. I, as much as I want to grow my YouTube presence as well, 
I don't have any aspirations to be a YouTuber and to be like endorsing prime energy drinks and all that other sort of shit that YouTubers do. Yeah. Um, I'm a musician. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, uh, not quick fire, but people will ask you what you do. And if you say musician, they'll always go further. And then you sort of do have to end up saying the little things. So I'll probably have to find yeah. something. I don't want to go. Uh, oof, what I sent you in the blog, in the, in the bi you know, biography. I don't want to say yeah. educator, YouTuber, blah, blah, blah. I'm a musician. And if they musician. say what you do, I say bass player. That's it. Ah, and, and, and then just, just walk away. Yeah. And yeah that's it. Yeah. Mic drop, bang, grand up. <laughs> yeah. Um, cool. What word do you find hard to pronounce? Uh, musician. Uh, no, there's, an, there's another one. Um, experiment. I, experiment experiment yeah so like whenever i say just experiment it's like it doesn't come out properly just experiment yeah, with it. yeah experiment i trip over my tongue an awful lot as well don't worry uh tea or coffee ah i've never had a sip of tea in my life and i've had one sip of coffee in my life at age 13 never to be repeated wow you are like one of the rarest people and to ever find for those that don't drink tea Being or coffee. Born and brought up in England. Uh, that's probably I, I got sent to Singapore basically because of that fact. It was shunned by society and not, <laughs> not. There's there's only two other people in the world that yeah. I know. Yeah, yeah. And one is my wife, and the other one is my mother. There's a neither there's, there's a deeper story, but this is quick fire, so we'll we'll move. Okay, on. grand. So grand, so yeah, cause it, beer. Good man. That's yeah. the correct answer to that. Yeah. Usually I, I ask this question and people give loads of like different like conditions and oh, it has to nah. be this type of tea and I can't have yeah. tea without that or I'll have coffee. But yeah, no time Beer, for coffee. It. No time Beer, for it. please. Yeah. I like it. Good man. I like it. Um, Right. If you could only eat one food for the rest of your life, Singapore, food from Singapore, what would it be? Uh, nasi Padang. You know that? Is it something to do with egg? No, it's it's kind of Indonesian, but uh, this is part of the Malay world. So you yeah, yeah. you go into a nasi padang place, and they just um, I don't know if this is cheating, but this is why I would do it because they have like loads and loads and loads and loads of different curries and things, and you go have that that that, that and that. So if you're going to eat that for the rest of your life, you could have any different combination, and you wouldn't get bored enough. Like I love chicken rice; that's a big thing here. Chicken rice. Yeah, yeah. But you I couldn't have that, chicken right. rice every day. I mean, you could, but yeah, nasi padang because yeah, you've yeah. got variety built in. Cool. It's like saying that. Oh, what, what, what would you eat for the rest of your life? Oh, I'd eat a uh, TGI Fridays because they have a a, a varied menu. Kind like, of, that, kind that's it's, good style. It's it's definite style yeah. rather than a thinking brand. outside the box. It's thinking outside the box. That's where you're, where you, where where you are. Cause you think outside the box. I like it. Um, if you could afford any car in the world to drive, what would it be? The the in, the first thing that pops into my mind was a Porsche GT3 911 GT3 only because I cycled past like a Porsche convention this morning like in this bizarre bit that no one's ever in there was like twenty Porsche, um, but I think it would be a, a good it would have to go along with a vintage base it would be like a a vintage Aston Martin maybe I don't know. Uh, one of the Bond ones, DB5. Yeah, it's got DB5. I was going to say DB5. Yeah, yeah. Go cool. for Very good. Silver. And uh, which? Silver. Silver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like Bond. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. No, if you're going to do it, you might as well do it right. Don't half arse it. Yeah. And then, um, as I said earlier on, the last question I'd ask you, what would you be doing if you weren't a musician? Well, I mean, to be serious, I have a degree in biology. The same with you. It's like the, the fall back on something route. And my dad was a doctor. A retired doctor, recent, recently retired doctor, and it was like uh, the school I went to very much. You go to university, so I did that. I got that degree. So, uh, but I went to London to try and be a musician. But it would probably the thing I wanted to do, if not music, I wanted to go to Bristol to work at uh, to study biology at Bristol to then go into the um, BBC Natural History Unit. Like to to work to work on nature programs, be a cameraman or something. Work work in those programs. So would I be doing that? Nah, I would have gone to university and then like do these jobs that my mates do, which is like uh, you know banking and finance and stuff like that. I so I got out of that. Thank God. Fair enough. That or a Fair enough. Premier League footballer, but again, no talent, so that wouldn't have quite worked. 
Uh, from what now, I, I know very little about football. From from what I see, there's an awful lot of lads that have very very little talent that are still doing all right. Not no, not true. Unfortunately, no, <laughs> not true. I would have been yeah terrible. But yeah, that would have no, been the dream I... dream job footballer, uh, or uh, nature cameraman. There you go. Nature cam- I yeah, love yeah. It. I, I, I wanted to move to Australia and work with Steve Irwin. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's I, what I wanted to do. I, I used to love him on the telly. I, me too. Loved all that stuff. And actually, around here, it's like the, I, I walk in the forests and jungles here, try to look for snakes and stuff. I love it. It's just that side of life and nature is Victor Wooten, the bass player. He's got a whole nature camp thing he does that's built around bass and nature. Yeah, and tracking and things like that. It's it's brilliant. It's amazing. Yeah, like um, I could easily see myself doing something like that you know because we're here and we've gone away from quick fire but you've got borneo not too far away two hours away from here you can see orangutans and all that kind of stuff yeah, and that's what indonesia is yeah. over there you've got some tigers there still that's you know yeah. it's quite a bit of a passion of mine is that side of things excellent yeah that's what, what when, when i came back from that side of the world i was like we literally live in a comparably third world country compared to the likes of Singapore. We were over in Hong Kong and Bali as well. And it's like just over there, just that end of the world just seems so much more advanced, not even in technology wise, but just in human people wise, <laughs> just seems everything is like, do you know what baffled me about Singapore? And you're going to laugh at this is that when we were getting the train and I, 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 I accidentally took a coffee on the train and was drinking yeah. away and didn't realize that that's like a big, big no, no. Yeah. But when I was, when we were on the train, people queued up in the actual, like this arrow in the market. Yeah. This little arrow. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. People queued up there. And I was like, it's a very compliant society here. And it's, I was uh, like, yeah, but like, why are they, I was like, why are they lining up? Like they're in yeah, school. Yeah. And then it dawned on me after a couple of days of being like, it's just, there's just people just do what they're told and people are just oh, sound I mean, it, uh, and nice yeah they are I mean it's very different there's so many things I miss about London and the grime and everything uh, but it's like everything's 180 degrees different here the weather the culture religions you know food everything I mean it's always roughly 30 degrees and 80% humidity I mean I love the weather here I absolutely love it and can't complain but I do do miss a bit of your minus four and five that you're getting Maybe I don't miss no. that actually, but I went back no, in November and that was cool. You know, so. Yeah, no, no, you don't. As as I said before, we came uh, on recording. I'm just getting yes, um, you're getting a blizzard or something, aren't you? Yeah, there's mm. there's a blizzard on the way, and I keep on getting weather warnings pinging up on my phone. Flurries, flurries. Uh, yeah, starting soon. Uh, expected at eleven minutes past three, which was twenty minutes ago. But hey ho, hey ho, Dan. Yeah. Before we leave it there, uh, where can people find you online? Good question. So uh, my website is onlinebasecourses.com. If you want to check that out, you can then find everything from there. But I'm mainly there. I'm on YouTube. So I changed it, actually. It is online base courses, but I changed it to Dan Hawkins Base Lessons just because I didn't like the other name. So you'd find me there and also Instagram, same, Dan Hawkins Base Lessons. And yeah, like anyone out there, if you, you just send me a message or what have you, I love interacting with people online if you've got any questions base or otherwise let me know i love it dan let's leave it there thanks very much thanks for your time today. so much for having me i've had a blast thanks